guys, it's me, Holly Madison. Welcome back to my channel. I'm distracted because I got a new phone and the video looks different from what I'm used to. So today we are on season two, episode 14 of The Girls Next Door. This one is called Rabbit Season. Um, I don't think we go back to Vegas in this, maybe we do, but we are auditioning women to work at the new Playboy Club opening in Vegas. So if you'd hit the like and subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it and let's get going with the episode. So if I remember correctly, we were judging kind of this open call for women who wanted to work at the Playboy Club. So we'll see how it goes. So this is before the Palms opened a Playboy Club in Vegas. And there's a casting call being held at the mansion. Okay, so we're flashing back and they're showing like old black and white footage of this TV show Hef used to do in the 50s. And they're showing off like the original bunny costume that they made. When the Playboy Club finally opened in Vegas, it was kind of awkward because it was like a nightclub slash gambling and I don't think it ever really found like its niche because people were just interested in going to just straight nightclubs like they are now. So this is where I wear my hot pink bunny costume that Pat Lacey, the bunny mother, made me and Hef didn't like it for some reason. He didn't like the fabric. I don't know why he didn't like it. It looks just like every other bunny costume. It just happens to be hot pink. And I'm asking Dick Rosenzweig, who works for Playboy, who's telling us about this search. Oh, can I wear a bunny costume? Because I just like to do things that were festive and fun and themed. So, of course, I wanted to wear my costume. And he's like, I don't know about that. That might be intimidating. It was always such a thing to get permission to do anything. It was so weird. And then it shows me asking half about it or dropping a hint. And then they do that thing where they zoom in on him and freeze and go, do, 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 do. I always like when they do that. It's funny. But, um... Yeah, it was just so dumb. Like, just let me wear it. Ugh. They were always so opposed to having fun for like a brand that was supposed to be all about fun. I don't know. For us, it was like, no. I really like the outfit I'm wearing to this pre-event meeting. It's like just like a white outfit with like a beret. It has the lady telling us what we need to look for in the applicants. And she says, and a willingness to relocate to Las Vegas. And I go, whoa, this is more hardcore than I thought. But I couldn't have been reacting to that. I wonder what I was really reacting to. Oops, you can see a boom in the shot. I love doing dumb stuff I wasn't supposed to do. Because once we got into this show and it was understood that, you know, we needed to do things to make the show interesting, I could finally, like, rebel a little bit even though it feels stupid to say that because like rebelling is wearing a bunny costume it's like when you put like a person in such a tight box that they think they're rebelling by choosing one of two choices made available to them you know that whole trick it's like that wait it shows me putting on like nude colored pantyhose and then black colored pantyhose did we wear two or was that just the wrong footage. I don't remember. I would have thought it was just one, just like the black pair, but maybe we wore two. I don't know. Seems like a lot you'd have to worry about running. Two pairs of pantyhose? Uh-uh. And I'm stuffing my bra with tube socks because I guess these guys weren't big enough. The scene where I'm like pushing my boobs up in this, it's a meme. I just see it everywhere. Maybe I only see it everywhere because it's me and maybe that's what comes up on my algorithms, but I just see that picture a lot. I can see my Playboy director's chair with my big fat Disney Tsum Tsum pillows all piled on top of it. And they have other people, they're dressed as bunnies, so why couldn't I be? And then they show this animation with all these people who are like rebels and then it shows me at the end and it says in my lower third Holly Madison rebel bunny. And that's kind of funny because that's kind of what I turned out to be. But I like the whole look I had that day. I like the whole pink Playboy bunny costume and the wig I was wearing. I just like the whole thing. So to get our shoes to go with the Playboy costumes, we would go to this place in Hollywood called Maya Shoes because they would give you the high heel shoe and they would dye it the color to match your bunny costume. And they still like comment under all my Instagram pictures. I love them. He is on crack telling me that this bunny costume is not a good fit because first of all it is, and second of all, it's made by the same people who make his other bunny costumes, and he's just being a dick and trying to make me feel fat or something, but I know I look good, so there. Damn, there are so many women at this search, and they are all in bikinis, which is not unusual like for a Vegas pool party or nightclub when women try out to be cocktail waitresses or whatever, it's considered an audition, and you have to show up and like bring a bikini and everything, but 
I don't know, it's so weird, so much pressure. And everybody here is outside by the pool. I don't know where they do them here in Vegas because I think they do like the pool season auditions in the winter, so I'd imagine it's inside, but like, I don't know, lighting isn't always flattering, I'd be so nervous. There are playmates working this thing, handing out papers in bunny costume. I think Hef didn't want me in the bunny costume because like as his girlfriends, we were supposed to be considered like on a different level than somebody who was like working the thing, but I wanna wear what's fun, so there. You guys, there's this new thing in Vegas. It's called Pickle Pizza, and Dana White just posted it on his Instagram today, and I want to go try it so bad, but it's like way in North Las Vegas. It's so far, so I'm not going there today, but soon I'll share it with you guys. So there's this thing we're doing called the Bunny Dip that the producer of our show was obsessed with, and he like worked it into my spinoff show too. It's just this move that you do to like kind of bend over like sideways and to set it down a drink because if you leaned over this way, like your boobs are falling out in everybody's face. So they wanted, you know, a more contained way of like setting down the drinks. And Keith is telling me I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> Bridget's like, I was not looking for a pretty face or a good body. I was looking for somebody who had a good attitude, which is fine. I just, I don't know why I think it's funny. Oh my God, there's the funniest girl. She's like, how long have I wanted to be a bunny? Oh my goodness, forever. I love the way she says that. I hope she got it. I don't remember who all got hired because I wasn't like, I mean, we went a couple times to the Playboy Club, but I didn't get like the full inventory, but I hope she got it. I wonder just out of curiosity if Kiana is the only black playmate we ever see on this show. Up to this point, I think she is which is interesting because obviously, like if you know the history of Playmates, there were a lot of blondes, a lot of white girls, not too many women of color. I'm interested if anybody else shows up. Like I know there were a few more over the couple years where I was working at the studio, but I don't know how many appeared on the show. So we will see. I think more could have been done for sure to help get more diversity in the Playmate feature in the magazine, but I don't think Playboy was doing a lot as far as searches. Like every five years or so, they would do like a search for an anniversary Playmate, but they weren't really doing like a lot of outreach to like modeling agencies or anything. It was more like, okay, who is Hef meeting or who's sending their pictures in or who's showing up at the studio for an audition. And honestly, a lot of women of color didn't audition. And I think a big part of that is representation. And it just goes to show how important representation is. Because if I, you know, was looking at Playmates as a blonde thinking, oh, that's something I could do. I'd be perfect for that. But if you're not seeing yourself represented, it might not occur to you that that would be something you'd want to do, or you might not think you would get accepted. So it's just kind of this cycle that perpetuates itself. And our friend Crystal Camden auditions, but I don't remember if she ended up working there either. I don't think she did. But I don't know if that's because she didn't get picked or because she didn't want to move to Vegas. I don't know. I bet a lot of people came to this audition in LA, not, to, not necessarily because they wanted to be a bunny working in Vegas, but maybe because they were hoping to get noticed for the magazine, I bet. And then there's a scene where we're kind of talking amongst each other, like, oh, her hair is bad. Her interview skills were bad. And Kendra's like, yeah, it'd be like me trying out for Miss America. I knew I wouldn't make it. And then I say something, what do I say? Let me back it up a little bit. Oh, I think I said, if you're older and your interview skills are bad, there's no excuse, which is kind of true. Like you should have caught on by now. I mean, I'm the least social, most awkward person in the world. And I think I could fake an interview by the time I was in college. <laughs> So then one of Hef's former girlfriends, Mandy Bentley, is trying out and none of us wanted to interview her because we just felt awkward about it because she used to be Hef's girlfriend and we didn't really know her. Like we'd seen her at parties and maybe said hi like once or twice while drunk, but like we didn't really know her. And I don't know, I just felt like, like props to her for showing up for the audition because it's one of those things where you would kind of, I feel like if I were in her place, I'd feel dumb. Like I feel like I should just be able to reach out to Hef and say, oh, can I have this job? And obviously it was like, no, you have to go um, audition like everybody else. And I don't necessarily think that should be the case. I don't know, I don't know. I just would have felt awkward. So props to her for showing up, but um, we didn't want to judge her because we didn't feel like we should. I don't know, it just felt weird because like she had been a girlfriend too. And I don't know, we didn't want to be like weird about it. Yeah, even, even the HR guy asks Keith, Hef's brother, what did you think? And he goes, well, I already know her, so it's like awkward. <laughs> so I'm not sitting down during this whole judging process because you're not allowed to when you're wearing a bunny costume. You're not supposed to be seen sitting down. 
except I do sit down for a second. I catch myself, but I think wearing the bunny costume is super fun as a costume, but I think if I had to work in it for eight hours, I would be hating life. So we are moving on to round two, where 20 of the women who tried out were picked to come back. So Hef and George Maloof, the owner of the Palms at the time, are sitting with us to see the last 20 women, which makes me wonder how many are they hiring? Because there's only 20. How many are we picking from this? It must be around Halloween season when we're shooting the interviews for this because Bridget is out in the game house again, which means her room was probably decorated for Halloween and they didn't want to film there because continuity. So I go from wearing a bunny costume and looking all cute in the first audition process to the second one, I'm like hair slicked back in a tank top. Not looking cute. Oh my God, it's um, it's showing Mandy Bentley came back and Hef is going to George and she's a Playboy celebrity, so whatever that's worth. And it shows me looking over at Bridget and I'm going, which we all know so many of these cuts are taken out of context. I might have said that to him going, she's a Playboy celebrity because he was always trying to like put like his women in like a hierarchy and like, oh, well, my ex-girlfriend was this and this ex-girlfriend was that to make us feel less than. So I might have done that, but I wouldn't have done that like in front of Mandy. She definitely, well, I don't think she would have even been standing there when Hep was going, you know, she's a Playboy celebrity for what it's worth. But I probably was making that face in real time, <laughs> just not in front of her. And it's nothing against her. It's just him and the way he would like always position like his girlfriends and his ex-girlfriends against each other. And it's just like, who cares? Like you put her on the cover because she was your girlfriend. Like we're actually like on a TV show that people watch, but oh, she's the Playboy celebrity. Watch out. <laughs> My favorite woman who tried out was Angela. She was the one who called herself an Asian with a badonka donk. And she was just funny. She kind of like had her own little comedy bit going when she came up and she had a great personality and a great body. And kind of an awkward thing happened with her later because she was so cute on this episode the executive producer wanted her back and he told me later when I was working at the studio, oh, Hef wants to make her a playmate, so reach out. And I was the one communicating with these women most of the time and you know, letting them know whether they got it or not. And I know how it can feel like having your self-esteem kind of hinge on that. So I know what it feels obviously to be on the other side. So I was reaching out to her, like asking, oh, would you ever pose and blah, blah, blah. Because the producer told me Hef wanted her to be a playmate. But then when I brought her back around to Hef or brought the idea of her back around to Hef, he was like, oh no, 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 she's not a playmate, blah, blah, blah. So then I felt stupid because I've been kind of like pursuing this woman, trying to like see if she would pose or not. And then I just felt dumb because then I had to be like, oh no, never mind. I mean, I talk about Mandy like giving her props for like showing up. But um, one of the things she didn't win points for was she didn't wear a bikini, which however you might feel about having to wear a bikini to an audition, it's still something that everybody else is doing. But like Kiana was a full on playmate and she still showed up and auditioned like everybody else and did great and got the job. So, so never mind. I take that back. <laughs> oh God, now it's showing all the women waiting around and they're acting like they're waiting around to hear if they got it or not. Do we announce that? I forgot if we announced it at the time. How, uh, can't we just tell them later? <laughs> like, I feel bad. Like how embarrassing to be told in front of everybody whether you got it or not. I don't like that. I don't know why I'm surprised though. Like it's such a reality TV in the 2000s thing to like have the contest where there's winners and there's losers. Like it reminds me of America's Next Top Model or something. Oh God, they are announcing it in front of everybody. I hate this. They gave it to Mandy Bentley, but they didn't give it to Crystal Camden. How awkward. I feel like if you're going to give it to one ex-girlfriend, you kind of need to give it to the other one. But maybe that's just me feeling like fair should be fair, even though it never was up here. So I don't know why I'm expecting it to be. Damn, who am I to be judging who's supposed to be a bunny or not? And I'm showing up with my raggedy ass hair all up in a banana clip, like raggedy. And then Crystal comes into Bridget's room to talk to her and Bridget goes, do you want to come with me to get cupcakes at Sprinkles? So this is the second Sprinkles cupcakes mention. I'm going to keep track of all of them because Sprinkles cupcakes were like such a thing on this show. Show the cupcakes. They don't show the cupcakes. Okay, so takeaways from that episode. Um, 
I want to start with the good part because this is one of the few episodes that I've watched and leaves me like feeling good and with good memories. Like I've said before on these reactions, you know, when people ask me if I want to relive this time in my life, I'm like, no, because I was miserable most of the time. But there are a few times like Casablanca night or certain movie night buffets where I see footage and I'm like, oh, that was a really nice time. Like that would be a nice period, like a nice couple hours to go back to. But I'm looking at this episode and this was probably shot like in summer of 2006. And this was after the show had been going for a season and a half. So, you know, I was feeling better about the situation at the mansion. We were treated a little bit better because now we were like stars of a show and I was a lot more confident. I don't think I would have ever like worn a bunny costume when I was told not to in the years before because I was a lot more afraid. And I knew because I was on this show that was a hit for Playboy, I wasn't going to get like kicked out tomorrow. So I wasn't like constantly scared. Like I would have been in the early days, like, oh, I'm going to get kicked out on the street any second. So I love just seeing that it was like a nice day where things were nice and I was having fun and all three of us were getting along. And I loved how I looked in the bunny costume and how my hair was that day and everything. So that was super fun. This was probably one of my more favorite episodes I've watched so far. Least favorite was how they told everybody at the end whether or not they got it. I hate that. I don't, again, I don't know why I'm surprised because that's exactly how reality TV was in the 2000s. It was all about like contests and who made it and who didn't and embarrassment and things like that. And they didn't really care whose feelings got hurt. And I didn't like it that they gave it to Mandy, but not Crystal. Like I understand Mandy was like a Playboy celebrity because she'd been on the cover, but I feel like if you have a group of women trying out and two of them are ex-girlfriends, it's really weird to give it to one and not the other. It's creepy and I just don't like those games. But overall, you know, I enjoyed seeing all those women who tried out bring, brought back a lot of good memories. So um, I will see you guys next time. The next episode is the one where we actually go to Vegas for the opening of the Playboy Club. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.